Welcome to the Grizzly Times podcast with Louisa Wilcox, a place devoted to all things grizzly, where we interview scientists, managers, Native Americans, and others about their perspectives and experience with bears and their ecosystems. This comes at a critical time in a complex debate about grizzly bears, with a recent restoration of endangered species safeguards for the Yellowstone bear, but a new proposal to strip protections for glaciers grizzlies, and when warming temperatures and development are transforming the bear's world. We hope that you find the information and views offered here useful as you shape your own conclusions. This is Louisa Wilcox with Grizzly Times, and I'm delighted to be here today with Adele Welch. Adele is a student at Park High School here in Livingston, Montana, who recently helped organize a school walkout to protest inaction by lawmakers on climate change. She and other Park High students were part of protests by millions of students around the world demanding action to address the climate crisis. Adele's also part of the Park High Green Initiative that's working on recycling and promoting sustainability. Adele, thanks for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me. Adele, it's nearly impossible to avoid the daily avalanche of apocalyptic news about the state of the planet. Our melting glaciers, the destruction of coral reefs, unprecedented wildfires, and the collapse of our biodiversity. How does that affect you? Um, it's really depressing. <laughs> um, I try not to look at the... I mean, obviously it's important to stay informed, but um, I don't know. I was reading an article about um, puffins the other day and just ah. the impacts of climate change and ocean acidification on puffins and right. what that does. And it's it's really depressing. I think that, yes, it's super sad and it can get you down, but I think it's also maybe a good place, or at least I try to use it as a jumping point to kind of flip it around. Like, hey, mm -hmm. no, we can stop this. There are cool people out there doing cool things, and I can be one of those cool people. Um, and you know what? It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So have you always been this motivated on the path of activism? No, no. Mm. Um, <laughs> mm. I used to really want to be a vet. <laughs> um, but oh, then one of my goats got sick, and... Uh, yeah, it, it was too hard. Um, hmm. I don't know. I think that I took a backpacking trip, um, mm -hmm. maybe freshman or sophomore year, I don't remember. But um, I think it really kind of boosted my confidence, and I was able to maybe take the anger that I was feeling about the political state of the world and the mm -hmm. climate cl climate state of the world and kind of channel that into more outward expression, I suppose, rather than holding it inside of me and kind of being angry and upset about that, mm -hmm. able to kind of do something about it, I suppose. And then the high school is such a great resource to, you have all these kids and they have to be there with you, so. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And you've obviously found a lot of like-minded students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some really cool students at Park High doing really cool things, mm -hmm. and I'm just really proud of them all. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about the protest that you recently organized. I mean, it wasn't sanctioned by the school, unlike some of the other protests, uh, such as New York City, that allowed the students to go out. But you obviously walked out anyway. What was the response of some of your friends and your family and even the school administrators to, to the protest? Um, I think the overall... Okay. So my friends and my family, and I think the administration as well, were very respectful um, from administrative points to enthusiastic and ready to go out there with me. Mm -hmm. um, and my family has always been very supportive, and my friends are very supportive. A couple of them had tests, and so we're like, Adele, I'm so sorry, but I can't come. <laughs> um, uh <-huh. laughs> which is unfortunate. I think that protests should come before tests. But, um, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I think that there's there were it was definitely interesting. I think Livingston is a really cool spot because you do have a lot of different minded people coming together and that's mm -hmm. represented in the school as well. And so there were definitely students who were making fun of the protest saying like, "Oh, oh. if you go outside at 10 a.m. today, the d temperature will drop 10 degrees or something like that." <laughs> Which oh, is <laughs> yeah, right. not great, but um mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so I think that Maybe jokes aren't the best way to express differences, but um, mm -hmm. I think it's still pretty cool to have 
the different minded people in Park High School and Park County as a whole. Yeah, well, you you described um, some middle school kids uh, joined you and didn't have permission and just walked out anyway. Yeah, so I worked with Dr. Scalia and the administration to kind of come up with a plan for what would happen to the students who walked out, mm -hmm. um, what would be told to the parents so that the school didn't get in any kind of trouble for facilitating a political, quote-unquote, walkout. Um but I did not get the chance to talk to the middle school at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so those students walked out with no, I, with the school having no idea what they were doing, which is quite a bit more daring and yeah. cool. And um, I'm super impressed with them, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that they came out. Um, mm -hmm. They're only seven or eight, but that's still... Well, a chunk. in a small community like this, that's actually that's a huge. lot. That's huge, yeah. And that's real courage. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you also um, spoke about a counter-protest. Yes. Um, I guess this kind of ties back to what I was saying about the different-minded people as one of the responses to the protest, mm -hmm. in addition to jokes. Um, several students drove their trucks by the protest at kind of a high speed for a school zone. Um, and released like some diesel black cloud kind of thing mm -hmm. um, into the community members' faces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they also didn't have permission that since they weren't part of the protest, weren't able to get mm -hmm. excused or unexcused absences or excused absences. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, cool. Not a huge protest, but mm -hmm. a little thing. And I think that that's important even if I don't believe with your beliefs, <laughs> believe yeah, in your beliefs. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you certainly started a conversation um, yeah. in the school. It's, I'd yeah. like to think so. I think mm -hmm. uh, no. another thing that happened the following week was Spirit Week for Homecoming Week. Uh -huh. um, and one of our days was Visco Girl Day, which is a social media app. Um, and what? there's like a Visco. Okay. It's a, it's a social media app. Okay. There's... Um, and there's a stereotype of the girl who uses it, and she has metal straws and like a water bottle, and doesn't really wear pants. <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay, yeah. But um, instead of metal straws, a lot of people were bringing plastic straws, and kind of, which I'm not that really annoyed me, but I, it's almost kind of still part of the protest that happened earlier. Like, hey, still in reaction to the climate action that we were calling for mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Wednesday. Um, still being talked about the next week. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, so what was your reaction when you were watching the news and the social media posts and realizing that this protest was going on around the world with millions of students involved? It's so inspiring. Uh, it really is. Um, I think it's so cool that you can have a global... I think it's so easy to forget how connected we are as a world. Like, mm -hmm. we only have this world. That's all we really know. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have proof or existence of other things outside of us, really, or living things. And so, I think that that's kind of cool to think of the whole globe as this united thing for our planet. Um, mm -hmm. On our planet as the only planet we know to mm -hmm. have life. Yeah, it's an incredible statement of camaraderie and yeah. of reading about, you know, students in Afghanistan and Absolutely. under police security to yeah. go out there anyway. Yeah, and I think our protest was very peaceful, but I think it's also cool to think about the radical protests that were happening and the different ways people were protesting across the globe. Like, mm -hmm. we came together, and yet each of these expressions was different, um, or reactions, mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, back to your protest, and there was a Livingston Enterprise article in which you said... I don't want this to be the one thing we did to solve the challenge of climate change. I want this to be the starting point. You described uh, a little bit of what's happened since then. Do you continue to be inspired? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm applying to colleges right now, and so oh. I'm writing my yeah, very exciting. <laughs> um, I'm writing my personal essay about kind of how I became a climate activist, the landscape, my farm, um, and I was. I was writing something about the community and all of a sudden just total imagery of 
the cool people that exist in Park County who are doing mm-hmm. so many cool things to protect Park County and our planet. And I think that that continues to inspire me and um, I'm just so happy. And um, <laughs> that is great because the news is really depressing. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, I think it's important to look at um, the things people are doing and to let that be the pushing point for going mm-hmm. forward. I'm super excited because we, the Green Initiative is going to start working with Farm to School to get the composting in um, in the school, which mm-hmm. is going to be awesome because there's so much food waste. Um, and I have an internship with Farm to School next semester, and I'm really excited to work with Farm to School and the Green Initiative on getting the compost. We're going to do a food audit. It's going to be awesome. And wow. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the Park High Green Initiative. It's 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 fairly new, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's only been around for three or four years mm-hmm. now because um, it started when I was in high school. Um, it was born out of two students who gradu- are graduated now. Um, but they it was started as a branch of student council, but they eventually came to um, our teachers, Miss Alicia John Ward and... Natalie's story um, to help them facilitate a recycling program because they noticed that there was a bunch of recycling just being in the trash all the time. And so they Mm -hmm. would collect it and bring it to Miss J's room. And Miss J would take it home on her bicycle to be recycled. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, And that has developed into now the school transfers our recycling from our beautiful recycling box in the back of the school to the transfer station. But there, the students still collect the recycling. Um, it's actually one of the biggest clubs in the school. We have wow. anywhere, yeah. There are about 12 consistent members, but we have like 30 people who have joined and joined like every other week or something like that. So wow. it's super cool. I mean, it, it, it sounds like you're really proud of all I'm of this. I'm so proud. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I guess the most inspiring thing or my proudest thing is how many people come together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I maybe there's not a whole lot, but that's because this county is small and seeing even just 10 people or 50 people show up for a protest or a meeting every week is super important. Yeah, it's huge, actually. Yeah. So Adele, what do you think it's really going to take to address the climate crisis? So I think that in order to kind of put an end to the rapidly approaching climate crisis, it requires a drastic change in the way we live and our lifestyle as humans. Um, And I think that the science has been around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Um, But how... I mean, being, not being climate conscious is so easy. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that change of any kind is hard. And especially this kind of change that is required to stop this crisis um, is incredibly drastic. I think we have to totally reimagine everything from what we eat to what our houses look like to Mm -hmm. what our buildings look like. Um, And that kind of change is really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to be hard for this generation. It's going to be hard for future generations. And of course it was hard for past generations. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're all living together as multi-generational society and which makes it even harder, I think. Uh, In what way? um, Well, I've grown up with parents who have always been environmentalists, Mm -hmm. maybe not radically so, um, but that's always been on their consciousness. And so me growing up with that and science and having climate change be real is it's easier for me to Mm -hmm. be able to adapt or change and, and imagine what differences could look like. Whereas someone who maybe was alive when the science came out, that's harder because they didn't grow up with it the entire time or it wasn't so blatantly in their face as I think it is now. Mm -hmm. Well, and what role do you think the sort of the anti-science climate um, creates? I mean, it does seem like we have an anti-science arena. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard um, because it is science and science is real not all I mean obviously we don't know everything but this is real there's so much evidence um and I think that that can be kind of 
dampering. But I also think it's important to remember, even as if we want to radically change and shape how we want to live our futures, having contrasting views is still very important mm -hmm. to keep ourselves in check. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Something I think is interesting is the vegan environmentalist movement. And I have friends who are vegan. I'm right. not vegan. Right. Um, but I think that's super cool and great you're doing that. I think that that's maybe not what the future of farming and food looks like. Okay. Um, because something that we learned in sophomore biology is the ecosystem circle and the circle of life and... Mm -hmm. Carnivores are super important, but so are um, elk and mm. what are they called? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Deer, moose, <laughs> Deer, ungulates. Moose, yeah. ungulates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and all those levels of um, animals and food chain are super important. And that cycle is exactly how ecosystems flourish. Mm -hmm. And I think that vegan and not eating animals, I suppose, doesn't really allow the cycle to be complete. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think that industrial agriculture, I suppose, is good for the environment. I think it's really bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that kind of industrial agriculture or vegan is very much kind of an either-or extremism thing. And mm. I think that if we kind of incorporate how ecosystems work in natural places mm -hmm. and use that in permaculture and sustainable agriculture and stuff like that, then we can still have the diet that our bodies want us to have mm -hmm. um, and have a sustainable environment. Yeah. I mean, it seems like veganism is a philosophical statement as much as anything based on science. or And it's also a concern about industrial agriculture, but, but it's also philosophy. Yeah, and I think that's... Obviously, I respect you if you are vegan mm -hmm. and that's the way you want to live and maybe it's hard to eat animals or your stomach actually doesn't do that. Um, I just don't think that that's necessarily the solution mm -hmm. to climate change at, from a food standpoint, right. I suppose. Yeah. And allowing different views of... Because that's my view on f how mm -hmm. we're going to solve it with food. Right. Vegan is someone else's way on how we're going to solve it with food. Mm -hmm. The industrial agriculture is another way of looking at food and all of them are equally important. Yeah. Well, Adele, you've obviously taken on a leadership role uh, early in your life. Um, what do you see as key elements of leadership, uh, especially since you're trying to promote social, cultural, and political change? Everybody always talks about listening, and I think mm. that that's really important as a leader um, and as anybody. But I think also actually listening is important instead of huh. the, I'm going to say this word wrong, but that's because I'm bad at words. Is it facade? Facade. Facade. Facade, facade of um, listening. I think it's really easy to kind of just look at someone and make eye contact and not actually absorb the words and let the words kind of change your viewpoint or your way of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's super important as a leader because the way we have had leadership in the past is it being a representative for the people, um, or at least in democracy. And so really letting different viewpoint points connect and change your view on how, on how and what is best for the people, mm -hmm. I suppose. And so I guess I, I try to do that. It's so hard because it's it so easy to be angry at people who don't agree with you and setting your beliefs aside and gosh also as a social activist I think mm -hmm. that oftentimes you're advocating for what your beliefs are mm -hmm. and so setting those aside as you're trying to lead them forward is a hard thing does that make yes sense? yeah yes and because in order to actually make change compromise is mm -hmm. what you're eventually striving for mm -hmm. And bringing people along, yeah, you know, does require that you st set some of your notions aside, yeah, of what you would rather do, yeah. yeah. Well, but yeah, what else on leadership? I mean, you've obviously been, you've instigated things. I mean, you created this protest, and you know, some of the projects with the Park Green Initiative. 
so how does how, how did you get into I mean how does that work with you um um I think confidence is huge mm -hmm. um I, I don't know okay I'm reading this book for an English class, and it's a long poem. And so mm -hmm. part of the poem, um, well, one of the lines was, Engage, enter like fire. And I thought that was incredibly beautiful. And mm -hmm. um, kind of a leadership, but also just being a person in the world of coming in as you, mm -hmm. um, but engaging with the people around you mm -hmm. and really talking to, but holding yourself in a way that you're still representing yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gathering that you, that your leadership style is one of passion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is obviously a strength. Yeah. <laughs> so you were an intern last summer with the Park County Environmental Council, mm -hmm. a local environmental group here in Livingston. Maybe you could share what you worked on a bit and how that experience might be helping you to refine some of your next steps. Yeah. Um, so when we were talking about what we were going to be doing for the summer, um, we basically said, okay, so there's these events going on throughout the summer. And so basically you're just going to help us put on these events. So you might be talking to Food Works to get a food donation or um, getting a flyer printed or coordinating volunteers or so many things, a multitude of things. Um, and some of the events we worked on were the hoot and getting the hoot plastic free. And so we had to coordinate compost volunteers for that. Maybe you could explain what the hoot is. Oh yeah, the hoot, um, sorry. It's a, it's a music festival that is put on in Livingston in August. It's free. Um, there's food vendors and a musical guest. It was really fun this year. And mm -hmm. All the takeout ware was compostable, so it was waste-free, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Huge achievement. Huge achie mm -hmm. achievement. Only two trash cans of trash were filled. The rest were compostable or recyclable. Wow. There were hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. It's oh. a huge event. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. That's super exciting. cool. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's... I'm very proud of that. And I think... Um, to continue with the rest of your question, I think that something that I really took away from Park County Environmental Council was it sort of gave me a window. Like, I've been involved in the school, and so I've seen the school a lot, but it gave me kind of a window into the broader community mm -hmm. and how many people are doing so many little things. Um, yeah. There was a woman, so we do the boomerang bags, which is... Um, you sew reusable bags from donated fabric to be used at grocery stores instead of plastic bags. And so at one of our boomerang bag stations in town, there was a woman who had seen the boomerang bags. She thought it was a really cool idea and made a whole bunch just by herself. Oh, and wow. That was so powerful to mm -hmm. me because she wasn't part of, she didn't come to a sewing bee or talk to us at mm -hmm. all, which is cool. And she, she just did that because she thought it was cool and she felt passionate about that and I think that 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 internship really gave me a window into how much our community does for our community and our mm -hmm. county um and I think that continues to inspire me that little things are just as important as the big things yeah well lighting a little candle leads to other people lighting candles yeah exactly mm -hmm. oh I'm sorry I totally forgot um, this dress I have on, oh. um, I am wearing from uh, the beginning of school to Christmas break um, to protest fast fashion and the environmental and social detriments it has. Wow. Um, or the fashion industry, I suppose. And so that's a little thing that I started doing with Colleen, who works at PCEC. She's doing it too. Really? Um, yeah. And... Last week, my I invited the entire school to do it with me, and obviously the entire school did not do it with me. Right. Um, but there <laughs> were about 15 or so students, maybe more like 12, um, who wore the same outfit for a week. Um, and now this week, two of my friends have continued to wear their dresses with me, and I think that it's a little thing. It's just a protest. Mm -hmm. There's no... Um, policy change or yeah. recycling being recycled, but 
it's it's you know it's something it's I I begin to think so much more about what choices where what companies I buy stuff from yeah what um my birthday soon and so oh, my grandma was like birthday. thank you uh, my grandma asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I want some matching pajamas and I spent so long trying to find a company that is sustainable so that my pajamas are not coming from a company that is bad yeah. for the environment and social um, bad for people yeah bad for people mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's something I wouldn't have done last year wow. and I think that like this protest is changing the way I look, this dress protest is changing the way I look at what I buy. And that's something so small, but it's having an impact on the way I live, which yeah. is having an impact on the world. So this was your idea? I mean, this was Colleen's idea. She oh, okay. saw it, um, a, our teacher in New Jersey did it Okay. Um, last year or something huh. like that. And Colleen was like, Adele, I'm going to do this thing. Do you want to do it with me? And I said, of course. Well, that's so cool. I mean, I remember when I was in my teens, though, I was so self-conscious about everything I wore. It would just made me completely nuts. I, yeah, I mean, I love fashion so much. Uh -huh. I really enjoy making outfits. Um, uh -huh. And so... There were definitely the first three weeks I didn't really tell anyone what I was gonna do because I was gonna talk about it at the homecoming assembly, um, and so there were definitely a lot of double double glances and mm -hmm. looks and comments like I would hear like a dress, you know, and mm -hmm. things like that. But um, I think that's again I'm fortunate to have such confidence because I do, and it's okay, and I am still being creative in how I wear this dress and it's been really fun I think well you look beautiful oh thank you <laughs> so Adele you're from the Bozeman Livingston area mm -hmm. and grew up here maybe you can share a little bit about some particular experiences that you can recall that inspired or empowered you mm. um um I like to go hiking in the Absorcas, and mm. I remember going hiking up to the elephant's head, mm -hmm. um, and you can just see everything. Yeah. Um, and that is so, such a different view of town and mm -hmm. the mountains, and that kind of freeing feeling, I suppose, and just how beautiful it is really inspires me to protect it and to also remember that there are different ways to look at things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is such a yeah. putting your life in perspective. Yeah. Like and you're also a river runner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I love rivers. Mm -hmm. My dad and I like to go floating together. Um, another elephant's head view is if you float down the Yellowstone towards big timber, eventually mm -hmm. you get to a point where you can see the elephant's head because mm -hmm. you can't really see it from town, right. but you can see it from down river and mm -hmm. that's cool too. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Mm -hmm. Great. So, from the experiences you've had so far, what kinds of education or experiences are you looking to um, so you can pursue the kind of life you want for yourself? Oh, uh, it's so hard. I'm in the middle. I have, okay, so there's these three very cool colleges that I want to apply mm. to. Um, and my criteria, I suppose, are outdoors, mm -hmm. um, community mm -hmm. engagement, um, and friendliness, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I place, I suppose, because I definitely want to end up in Montana again. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Um, but I also want to go and look at some other things before I come back. And so, trying to figure mm -hmm. out where I want to be is hard. Um, but I definitely always want to be in a place that engages with their community. And maybe that's something that I have to start on my own eventually. But um, I don't know. I think it's really cool that I was born or near a place, Livingston, that engages so much with its community. And that's something that I want to carry with me mm -hmm. forever. Do you have a sense of... Uh... Are you looking to be a political activist, or do you have any sense? I know it's early. I didn't have a clue when I was your age what I was um, going to do. I kind of have a plan. Oh. <laughs> um, mm. I really want to be an outdoor educator, um, mm. either like on a semester school, or um, there's a bunch of programs that take students out yeah. into 
cool adventures and take them backpacking mm-hmm. and stuff. And I would really like to do that. I would really like to run a nonprofit. Ooh, wow. <laughs> and I That's would brave. also <laughs> really like to be the state senator for Montana. All right. <laughs> the state representative for yeah. Montana and DC. So that yeah. would be awesome. I think that'd be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Time but. for another woman from Montana going yeah, to absolutely. Washington for us. Yeah. It's been too long. I think so too. <laughs> but I, I have a few years. Somebody else could come along. <laughs> well, yeah. But, but you'd be a great candidate. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> what is it that maybe you could just um, reflect for a second? What is it that you and your peers do you think can affect can do to affect the change you'd like to see? So much. Um, I think anything from not buying from not buying plastic or not buying um, clothes from Forever Twenty One, even though they're going out of business, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh. or to going to protests mm-hmm. to. Um, speaking at city commission meetings with like working on getting um, my friend Sula mm. Duncan is applying for the conser- city conservation board that they're starting in Livingston. Really? So they're going to have, know. yeah, they're going to have a conservation board and there's going to be a youth member uh, representative. Wow. And so she's applying for that. So that'll be really cool. Things like that. Like mm-hmm. even donating like $1 to a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Um, Hiking, taking someone who's never been hiking, hiking, Mm -hmm. I think is a very cool thing that can get someone inspired in conservation and, um, yeah, Yeah, everything, everything and all things. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Adele. I, I, this has been a wonderful experience. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me. This is Louisa Wilcox and Adele Welch with Grizzly Times. Thank you.